Hello and welcome to the Magical Midlife Podcast, where you get a refreshing, uplifting and optimistic perspective on life in your 40s and 50s. I'm your host, Lindsay DeSwart, and I'm delighted that you've joined us here today. So let's jump right in. Hello and welcome to the Magical Midlife Podcast. This is episode one and I'm Lindsay DeSwart. I'm your host And I am a life coach, mentor, and a host of the Soulful Adventure Living Retreats for amazing women who are looking for a bit more adventure. And obviously, when we can start traveling again, I can tell you all about what exciting retreats are coming up. So anyway, this is the first of this series of podcasts, and it's a podcast that's been brewing in my mind for a long time. And... Like many projects that we, you know, we want to jump into and we're excited about jumping into, as soon as you get all excited about it, then the next thing that generally follows is getting scared about it. And here we go. Um, I've got plenty of fabulous information to share with you. And over the next few weeks, I'll be inviting in inspirational uh, speakers and interviewing people about all the topics that in your midlife, you know, you want to know more about. So there's all things like people who've made really brave jumps to maybe take on a new career or different aspects of living in family life. And maybe as our teenagers, or well, maybe as our kids are growing into teenagers or perhaps they're growing up and actually, you know, moving away to university or moving away from home. So as a mum, you face different challenges. So I currently have one child away at university I've got another who potentially is moving abroad and then I've got another who is still at home but coming into teenage years. If you have teenagers or you've had kids who've already been teenagers then you know it brings in some different challenges. Anyway the thing that I really want to share on this podcast my my goal for it is almost to be a bit like a women's circle. So I don't know if you've ever been to a women's circle but the energy of a women's circle is so welcoming and so accepting and so healing actually because it's the environment whereby nobody is better than anybody else you all have many experiences and you come in and you share bits of wisdom you're also there to learn Uh, you're also there to support each other so I know in a podcast it's a bit strange because you say well yeah but we're not in a circle My intention is that this is completely a judgmental free environment and so please share any comments or feedback or discussion points and I will do everything I can to address those, um, to listen to your points of view and also if there are particular speakers or people you want interviewed or information that you would find really useful then let me know and I will use my network and also, you know, reach out to people so we can get the information that you're after. So this podcast, you're probably going, if you're anything like me, I am 50 years old and I listen to a lot of podcasts while I'm driving around. I've got a horse, so I'll go and see my horse every day. Um, And so while I'm driving to the barn, I listen to all sorts of podcasts. And I've got to be honest, the podcasts have been really, really helpful and inspiring all the way through COVID, because rather that than listen to the radio news, which is far from inspiring, I listen to all sorts of podcasts, which is one of the reasons why I'm so inspired to do this for you. So again, my intention is that if you are maybe cooking supper, or you're driving somewhere, or you're running errands, you know, whichever errands you're allowed to run, depending on what country you live in, um, that, that I'll come with you. And keep cheerful, give you maybe some optimism, some motivation, and actually to start dropping in some positivity and some good vibes about being the mature women that we are today. So I really think that midlife years can get a bit of a bad rap, and I think it's unfair and unjust, and there is also some validity in it. But my real viewpoint on this is by the time you get to, let's say, between 40, well, let's say north of 40, so 40 plus, you've had a good deal of experience of life. And so often people just kind of brush that under the carpet and 
there is a huge social pressure that, you know, how do you look as you grow older? Nobody wants to do ageing. I mean, the the anti-ageing skin industry, hair industry, all the rest of it is multi-billions worth of money. Um, and I don't think that is a, a really resourceful place for us to come from anymore. So there's a couple of makeup companies. And in fact, there's one makeup company that I would really like to interview because they are all about for mature skin and looking natural with mature skin and enhancing your natural beauty. So I will absolutely try and get one of those uh, companies to be an, um, an interviewer, an interviewee on the podcast, because I'd love to find out more and also to share that with you. Because I think it's about time that we had a lot more inspiring midlife role models. I've done quite a bit of research actually to find out, you know, which actresses and um, singers maybe even got started in their midlife years. And although I must admit, I've found some that have a very different perspective in the midlife years, looking back on their young years. So they didn't necessarily get started in the midlife years, but certainly really appreciate that the journey they've had and they changed their outlook through the midlife years. But the other thing that I've noticed is in my research, there may be um, there may be a term that you also oh, there is a term that you may have come across and it's um, the crone. So I don't know if if you are familiar with that term, but it's just got a really negative kind of connotation, like a witchy connotation. But the thing about the crone is actually there is crone wisdom. There is a great deal of wisdom in our age group and of being a woman of you know some life experience. So some of the uh, the, the points that I researched about the crone, which I think were really resourceful, so I want to share them with you. There is, the, is so it's called an, an archetype, um, and it's associated with the aging process. And as she, as a woman ages, it becomes about accepting the renewal of life and embracing new starts, and also what those the processes that those new starts offer. So, as I say, it could be a career change. It could be, you know, the kids are leaving home could be the kids just don't need you as much anymore. So actually, you've got a ton of free time and possibly you don't even know what to do with it. So you've got this whole new opportunity, um, but you're only going to do something really cool with it if you can come at it from a place of realising that your child-rearing years have gone uh, and now it's time to bring in something new, something maybe that's really important to you. I mean, just me mentioning my horse... I rode horses and had a horse when I was a child. And then all the time I've had my kids, I haven't had the time and, you know, not the money for it either. So now that, in, in fact, my horse arrived the day before my 50th birthday and it wasn't meant to be that way, but it just worked out that way. So it's just, and it's funny how many people I've come across who have come back to horses and to riding in their midlife years, because at last they've got time to do something for themselves. So that's the sort of energy I really want to enhance in this podcast and to share with you on a regular basis. So the other thing about the crone. So one of the things it says, as she ages, she gains new wisdom and maturity through experience, including through the experience of menstrual cycle and becomes increasingly in tune with her body. So, of course, that is referring to the menopause, which is the only thing that ever seems to be associated with midlife years, which I think is rather sad. Because the menopause in a different culture, not in our Western culture, the menopause is seen as, you know, like a, a coming of age almost, like a rite of passage to become a woman of wisdom and somebody who can be, you know, relied upon almost as like an elder in the community. Whereas for us, it just gets a really bad rap and it's like, oh, it's all night sweats and weight gain and all this other stuff that you'll see advertised on social media that everybody's trying to combat. I'd love to put that positive spin on it for you. So one of the key advantages about coming into your midlife is the fact that you've got the advantage of becoming less susceptible to worrying about what people think of you, what people are saying, is your fashion right, you know, does your bum look big in this, that kind of energy of always worrying about what the outside world might think of you. As you grow into your, you know, your midlife years, there is just this inner confidence that grows within you. And I just, I really want to encourage you really to nurture the power of that voice, actually, and 
to see what goodness it's it's going to bring. Because when you start to look at your situation from that place of power, all of a sudden you think, oh, you know, what challenges have I faced over the years? And okay, well, now that I'm strong enough to do that, what can I bring forward? What could I now go and do? What might be my next goal? So, I mean, that leads to why I started off with the Soulful Adventure Retreats. And there is nothing like, I'm going to share with you, there is nothing like standing on the platform about to launch yourself into like a treetop trekking or a zip line to really question, oh my goodness, I am terrified. However, I'm going to do this. And then if you've ever done anything adventurous like that, which I'm sure you have, most people have, um, or a lot of people have, um, you get to the end of it and it's so exhilarating. And it's the same, I mean, let's face it, if you look back at your children, there were some really challenging times in bringing them up. But you look back and there is also some joyous, lovely memories, some glorious times that you shared. And they don't have to be big or special, but there is something so incredibly powerful in your spirit and in your soul about bringing up your children. Um, Challenges too, of course, obviously, because we all have those. But by the time you've got to midlife, you can actually be, you've, you've weathered those challenges. You know, you've been there, you've got the t-shirt. So think of that almost as like a foundation that you're standing on. And from that foundation, what is it that you really want to create for your life going forward? So I, f- I found a poem, actually. It's called, it's from uh, one of my favourite Facebook groups, which is called The Wild Woman Sisterhood. And this poem is called Life at Midlife. So I'm just going to share it with you. I'm no longer waiting for a special occasion. I burn the best candles on ordinary days. I'm no longer waiting for the house to be clean. I'll fill it with people who understand that even dust is sacred. I'm no longer waiting for everyone to understand me. It's just not their task. I'm no longer waiting for the perfect children. My children have their own names that burn as brightly as any star. I'm no longer waiting for the other shoe to drop. It already did and I survived. I'm no longer waiting for the time to be right. The time is always now. I'm no longer waiting for the mate who will complete me. I'm grateful to be so warmly and tenderly held. I'm no longer waiting for a quiet moment. My heart can be still whenever it is called. I'm no longer waiting for the world to be at peace. I unclench my grasp and breathe peace in and out. I'm no longer waiting to do something great. Being awake to carry my grain of sand is enough. And I'm no longer waiting to be recognised. I know that I dance in a holy circle. And I'm no longer waiting for forgiveness. I believe, I believe. And that is by Mary Ann Perone. And I love the energy of that. It is all about letting yourself off the hook and actually just stepping into the goodness of everything that you've done so far. So now you have the opportunity to create, as I say, maybe a new career or create, or maybe, you know, you can focus on if interior decoration is your thing, maybe now you can, you've got some time and maybe you've even got some money to spend some time doing up your home or doing projects that you really enjoy that you've been putting on the back burner for so long. It's so easy to do that with family commitments. You put stuff on the back burner and you think, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And then 10 years later, you look back and go, oh, look, uh, it's still in the cupboard and I never quite got to it. So maybe now is the time to get to it. Now, I've been, as I say, I've been listening to all sorts of inspirational and really motivational podcasts all the way through um, the COVID times, probably the last 18 months, actually, and a lot of spiritual work. And so I've been training, doing a lot of spiritual training to be a shamanic healer over this last year, certainly, and a bit before that. And it's really interesting within this time because there is something so special about the energy that we are currently in, about the feminine really rising in its power and its balance. And it seems like the perfect time because that's exactly what the midlife years are all about also, about stepping into the strong woman that you are and the things that you can do, the things that you can achieve, the things that you can take control of or get back in control of maybe. Maybe you've let those things go. 
And all those things are okay. That's the thing. I just want you to let yourself off the hook and know that you've done okay. And even if you haven't done okay, you've still got time to sort stuff out. So don't beat yourself up about it. It can be so easy just to feel like you've, you're have you not good enough or you haven't done enough or you haven't got enough. And it's very often us who put more pressure on ourselves than anybody else. So sometimes when you think about how you treat yourself and then if you have a daughter, you could ask yourself, well, would I want that for my daughter? Is that the upbringing I want for her? Do I want her to treat herself in this way? And if not, then why are you doing it to yourself? So I really encourage you to to start to look at what it is that you want in your life and to give yourself some time to create that. So even if it's just starting with buying yourself a notebook and starting to jot down some notes, try and remember what was it that in childhood you loved doing. And certainly anything around the age of kind of 10, 11, those are really profound years. And very often those are the interests and hobbies that we actually come back to when we have time and resources to do so so think back to what you were doing at that time and think if there's anything you know any hobbies you had that you might like to take up again if you've got some time now obviously with covid we've all been given a bit more time so it's quite easy to 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 reconsider and think how am I going to be spending my time now that I am not racing around like with all the kids activities I mean I know at one stage I was doing Did I do 60 kilometres in a night? I think so, because I was doing the soccer run. Um, One of the kids was at cadets and I think one of the kids had ballet or something like that. So I think I probably drove about 60k one night and then had to get back for the puppy who was young and needed to be let out of the crate. So although I love those days, um, I'm kind of relieved that they're behind me. So if you feel like that and you can relate to that, then please know you're absolutely in the right place. And together we can explore what this mid, these midlife years look like, along with, as I say, other people that I'm going to bring in to be interviewed so that we can all share wisdom and help each other. So I'm not going to go on for too much longer for this first episode, but I would really invite you, if you think this is something that you are going to enjoy, please subscribe to this podcast. Please share it with your friends too. And... If you want to check out any of my work, I am at soulfuladventureliving.com. Again, my name's Lindsay DeSwart. I'm so grateful for you being here with me today for this very first podcast. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.